In this video, we're going to put all the pieces together and build out the functionality to be able to submit and save a new post in our Instafire app. So at this point, we've already done all the error checking. So if we've gotten here, we have all the data needed to create a post and we want to now submit it. This requires a couple different steps. And the reason for the complexity here is because we need several different operations to succeed before we can actually make the post. The first thing we'll need to do is upload the image that the user selected to Firebase Storage. Once that happens, we need to make one more asynchronous call to Firebase Storage in order to retrieve the download URL or image URL for this photo that we just uploaded. Finally, once we have the image URL, we can create a post object, which includes the image URL, the description, and the user, and add that to the post collection in Firestore. The main thing to keep in mind here is that we can't do any of the later operations until the ones before it have succeeded. For example, we can't retrieve an image URL until we've uploaded that image, and we can't create a post object until we have an image URL. We need to have a way to fire off this asynchronous request to upload the photo, which might take some amount of time, wait for that to succeed, and then do the next operation, and then when that succeeds, then do the next operation. And we'd also like to handle failure during any of these. To handle these chained asynchronous operations in a clean way, we're going to use the Tasks API from Firebase. The first thing we'll do is upload the photo to Firebase Storage. And this is the first time that we're actually going to be integrating Firebase Storage into our app. So go into Tools, Firebase, and look for Storage, and then follow the guide here. We've already connected our app with Firebase, so the next thing we'll do is add Cloud Storage to our app. So tapping on that button will allow you to add the Gradle dependency, which will pull that library in. And then once that succeeds, we're going to create a storage reference as shown here. So I'm going to come up here and let's create a storage ref reference. And the storage reference is pointing to Firebase storage. So we need to initialize it inside of the onCreate method. That storage reference will equal Firebase storage dot get instance dot reference and that'll point to the root of Firestore. Okay, now that we have the storage reference, we can start to use it down here. The way this works is we need to sp specify the location of where this image that we're uploading should live. So like we had done inside of the Firebase console, we want all the images to live inside of this images directory. And so the child will be images slash and we need to give this a file name. We need to make sure that the file name for each image uploaded is unique. An easy way to do this is by leveraging system.currenttimemilliseconds. The idea here is that the current time in milliseconds is changing so rapidly and increasing so rapidly that the chance of collision of two unique clients or two unique users uploading a file with the same current time milliseconds is so rare that it should pretty much never happen. We'll also add photo.jpg as a suffix to each file name. So now that we've defined where the photo should live, let's capture the result of storage reference.child as photo ref. And now we can use this to upload the photo URI. Let's say put file and we'll pass in the photo URI. This is where we're going to start using the power of the tasks API. Photo reference that put file will return to us a task which represents the result of uploading our image. We'll call this special method continue with task. The idea is that we'll receive as input the result of the photo upload operation. And we'll call that photo upload task. And our responsibility now is to continue with another task based on the photo upload task result. The nice thing here is that if the photo upload task succeeded, we'll continue as normal. But if it failed, the tasks API will propagate that failure to the next task. So there's no need to do special error handling in failure cases. The task that we're going to continue with is retrieving the image URL for this uploaded image. And the way we can do that is by fetching the download URL of the photo reference that we had just defined. So I'll say photo reference dot download URL. And just to have this be a bit more informative, let's put a log statement here indicating what was some information about this photo upload task. So we'll say the number of bytes that were uploaded. The result attribute of photo upload task might be null, and that would indicate a failure, which is why we have to put a question mark here. But the nice thing is that we don't have to do any special handling around this because of what we talked about, where the failure will just get propagated down into the next task. Photo reference that download URL is another task 
for which we want to get a callback. So we'll call continue with task one more time, and the input will be the result of the download URL task. If there was an issue or a failure here, that will get propagated down into the task continuation, which we're going to output. But if it succeeded, then we need to create a post object with the image URL that we get from the task. We'll use the constructor for our post data class. And the first parameter here is a description, which will just be the text attribute of the description edit text. Next is the image URL. And this is where we're going to use the download URL task result. Next is the current time in milliseconds, followed by the signed in user. And finally, we need to end this continue with task block with another task. And the task that we're going to end on is uploading this post into Firestore. So we'll say Firestore DB dot collections, and then we'll pass in the post collection. And our job here is to add the post. And now you can see that the error is away because we have indicated a task as the next operation. This is the third and final asynchronous operation that we care about. So instead of using continue with task, we're now going to end the chain by using add on complete listener. The input here will be the result of uploading this post to Firestore, which we'll call post creation task. So there are two outcomes, post creation task succeeded or failed. Let's handle the failure case first because we actually need to handle it here. So if it didn't succeed, that means that either this particular post creation task failed or one of the earlier tasks have failed. So let's log an error here so we can print out what the exception was. And let's also show a toast so the user knows what's happening. If the post creation ta task succeeded, at this point we want to navigate the user to the profile activity. And before we do that, why don't we clear out some of the fields in the layout to give an indication to the user that everything has succeeded. So let's clear out the description. etdescription.text.clear will clear out the description. And then let's clear out the image view as well. So let's say set image resource to zero. And then also let's make a toast to tell the user that, that this has worked. Now we want to create intent to go to the profile activity. And then the reason this is complaining up here about photo URI is because photo URI is technically a mutable property. And so it might have changed. However, we are checking photo URI is not null because if it were null, we wouldn't have gotten this far. We would have returned early. And so what I'm going to do is just specify another variable here called photo upload URI. And that's going to be the photo URI and cast it as a non-null URI. And so we'll, we'll upload that. Uh, one thing we can also do taking our learnings from login activity is, is that we want to disable the button for submitting a new post until this asynchronous operation has succeeded. So as soon as we have done the error handling, if we're going to make this asynchronous calls, at this point, we want to disable the button submit. And then we only want to enable it in the oncomplete listener. The same pattern that we did in the login activity. One more thing we need to do is pass in the intent extra on the profile intent to indicate the username of which profile we want to navigate to. So in order to do that, we need to reference the extra username field, but we need to make this public. And actually, we don't need the keyword public because by default it will be. So now we can use that extra username and pass in the username of the signed in user. Finally, one last thing we can take another learning from login activity is that once the user has created the post, we would like to remove the create activity from the back stack. Once the operation has succeeded and they're looking at the profile activity now, going back shouldn't open up the create activity again because the creation flow is ephemeral or transient. So instead, we'd like to finish the create activity right here. And with that, let's try this out. So I'm currently logged in as Nathan. So if I go into my profile, you can see that. And now if I go back and let's start the creation, I'm going to upload the banana bread. And I'm actually going to just use emojis for this. So banana bread, and I'm going to submit. And you can see that the button submit got disabled for a little bit while the operations were happening. And we succeeded. And immediately we go back to the profile page for Nathan. The relative time here is zero minutes ago, which makes sense because we just uploaded this post to the backend. 
One thing we can also do is verify inside of Firebase. If we go into storage, we should now see one extra image here, which is this one. And that has the pattern, the path file name that we expect, which is the current time in milliseconds followed by photo.jpg. And then if you go into database, we should see one more post show up. So now we have four posts. And if I look through here, we can find the banana bread right here. And if I tap on the back button now, we have navigated back to the posts activity, which is the activity which shows everyone's posts. If you've gotten this far, congratulations. You've built out a really full featured app, which allows you to view Instagram posts and also create new ones for the signed in user. In the next video, we will do some small design tweaks and we'll talk about each of the concepts that we've covered. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.